shall we push the begin rant button? Because Ugh. you, Brian, Brian's an MVP. So we're like, all right, no, let's see. Maybe Brian is the <laughs> unwilling MVP. <laughs> so first of all, uh, yeah, I, 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 so I have been a Microsoft MVP since 2003. And, you know, that's, well, I won't get into what the program is, but, you know, I feel like back in the day it used to matter. <laughs> um, now, granted, you know, now when I was an MVP, <laughs> the, when I started, when I joined Old the Old man Brian here. No, hang yeah. on. When I joined the MVP program, I was like, I joined along with a bunch of other people in the, for Terminal Server MVP. So I think like in the, the year that I joined in, like ben, that was Benny's year um, and oh, who else was in there? There's a bunch of people. Um, and before me, the only MVPs were like Claudio was an MVP before me. Uh, and I think that was maybe it. There's like two, there was two terminal server MVPs and even they were like, oh, this program's going to hell because now they're like, it was probably like, like or something. eight people. Yeah. Um, who I've never met in person by the way. Um, but she is, uh, yeah, she's in Sweden, I think, and just answers questions on Microsoft boards all day, and that's that's her thing. Um, I'll talk to her via email. She's very lovely, um, but does not uh, want to go out in public, um, or does not want to go to these events because she says, "Oh, I just handle the easy questions," but which maybe is true. She just does like a hundred a day, <laughs> and so yeah, and she's amazing at it. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and if you're if you're out there, we have always you got you know buy form anytime you want to come. It's on us. So um, take it anytime <laughs> you want. Um, but the um, I don't know, you know, but we had, I feel like it was more personalized attention they gave us. I, I don't know. We had this, like the MVP contact, you know, that like your liaison into Microsoft um, has been like, it's, you know, it was one person for a long time, then another person for a long time. And then recently it's gotten like every six months there's a new person. They don't know who you are. And they each have like, you know, a hundred MVPs to deal with. Um, and they used to give us stuff of value like uh, MSDN subscriptions. So at least we got all the software from Microsoft free, but they don't do that anymore. They used to give us um, email addresses, actually internal Microsoft.com email addresses. So you could be like on the Exchange server at Microsoft, and you could really interact with the product team directly and like look, at, look them up in the gal and that kind of stuff. But that's all. They don't do that anymore. Um, and the timing, they have this MVP conference where everyone gets together for like two or three days, but it's always in the beginning of March. But unfortunately, the beginning of March doesn't always like sync up very well with where they're going to be making announcements because the Microsoft product cycle is so slow. So like even going to that thing is like pretty freaking worthless. It's just like parties. It's just a junket, you know, like you go to Seattle and like have parties at the, I don't know, Children's Museum or the Rock and something. I don't know. It's just, it's just a big giant party, you know, um, and it's just and then you go in the, the rooms with the, with your people and it's all like this NDA stuff about the future that they're like so far in the future and they like ask you what your opinions are and guess what? The same thing always happens. Like, oh, licensing sucks and it's just, I, I don't know. And, and you, we can't write anything about it then and, and and that becomes a, that in a way is a liability because I, I write under, and I, I am also part of NDAs, not, I don't think with Microsoft but with, 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 with other companies and, 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 it's, and it's hard because if you get NDA information, you really can't speculate on what they might do with things because no. if you were told that and then you break NDA somehow by accident, like that's – it's a liability. Yeah, so we backed off from NDA. So we don't do NDAs really anymore um, and unless it's a very specific thing. so like or short term too. We'll, well, yeah. So there's a difference between NDA and embargo. So embargo is just like – let me tell you about this news this week. We're not announcing until next week, so don't tell anyone about it. But you can, you know, have your article ready to go. I'm fine with that. But this long-term stuff, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm also not saying that NDAs are worthless. Like if I was an end-user customer um, and I was like buying into in a big ways VMware or Citrix, I would want to get their like NDA roadmap for where they're going in the next year, so I can make decisions about what products I'm buying. Um, but for our role, like where we're, our jobs are just to write and comment about stuff, these NDAs don't really. You're right. They don't help us because they, they hurt us because we're, we're, in a, we're in a room all day hearing about all these features, and then we can't. But the vendors, all the vendors, it's really changed. Like Citrix used to be very open with what they tell us under NDA. Um, and then as soon as VMware, but that's all on ZenApp and you know, Metaframe. But then as soon as VMware View came out, Citrix started really clamping down and doesn't tell us anything because they're afraid that we're on the take from VMware and just going to go leak it back to VMware. And <laughs> VMware doesn't tell anything because they think we're all in bed with Citrix because Citrix is there first. And you know, Microsoft, everything is NDA and like, it's just, so, you know, so the program became like, you don't get MSDN. They don't know who the hell I am anymore. You don't get the email addresses in, in there. NDAs are kind of worthless. I actually didn't even apply to the program this year. Cause what happens is every year 
the MVP program, it's like a reward for the work you did in years past. So it's like um, they look at for people who are members of the community and post blogs and do ev- events and speaking and that kind of stuff. But I didn't even – you're supposed to apply to it every year and send them like an update of what you did. But I didn't even do that this year because just thinking I would drop out. But like they still made me an MVP again. So I'm now an unwilling – I didn't sign the – like they gave me they gave me all the MVP and all that. But I didn't um, – I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't sign that again. Um, they sent me the trophy. Actually, can, can one of you grab that trophy off of Jack's desk? <laughs> Let me show you this thing. <laughs> so even the prizes, like they used to, you know, give you like this trophy every year, but then now they also, they stopped doing, um, they give you like one big trophy and then you have like these little rings that you plug on each year. That's like, you got like, so my MVP kit this year was my lapel pin and my, you know, my trophy ring. Um, that's it's like 2012 on it or whatever. Do you have um, any plans to wear anything with a lapel this year? I don't think you need to write the word lapel. I don't think you need to put the word this year under that statement. Uh, well, anything- sometimes you have a meeting. Like you, you you met with like Parliament or something last oh, year. Yeah. You had to wear a suit to that. Fuck, you know? man. I should have worn my MVP thing to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so all right. So, so okay, you tried hang, to use your mic. Here, here's this thing. Thank oh. you, Justin. <laughs> so here's my here's my MVP award. <laughs> and the funniest thing, too, is like the, apparently they started this in the year 2010 because there's like 2010, 11, and 12 discs that plug into this little trophy. This is – you could kill someone with this thing. This is heavy. Um <laughs> And then, but people complain because they, they were MVPs for like many, many years. So if you were an MVP for before, they, get, they, they, they sent us later like a five-year disc. You can like put it on the bottom to show you're an MVP like at least the past five years. But I was actually an MVP even before that. So like they owed me like an extra one-year disc. But, you know, I don't know. It's just this is, this is the value of being an MVP. And so the other value they say is like, look, man, it's not about like trophies. Actually, we can just put this. We're going to build some shelves in here next week. And there we go. The value is its background, so you don't have to look at this wooden wall the whole time. And they say that, well, man, the value is you have a connection to Microsoft. Like, you can ask them questions. You can get questions answered and, like, you know, ask them. The, just It's a direct connection into Microsoft, and, you know, people find that valuable. Okay, fine. So I've been an MVP for, uh, well, eight years according to my trophy, but in real life I think it's been, like, nine or ten years. And I don't believe that I've leveraged my access to Microsoft for fucking anything before until this on live see what this brings back around to on live so this on live thing happens and the other cloud providers are basically saying this is shady um well the whole world is saying like is this shady is embed together how's it possible so i email my contact at, at microsoft to ask about um hey on live that's all the rage has been in the blogs and tweets like what's happening with that uh and they came back with like a pretty generic answer which is like of course we cannot comment on you know any customers what they might or may not be doing because that's not really like Hey, you know, we're just a product group. Now, granted, this product group has desktop licensing experts in it, and these desktop licensing experts have been at the MVP meetings and always say, if you have any questions, send them over, we're happy to answer. And I'm going to ask a question, they're like, oh, we can't comment on this. I'm like, well, okay, so that was an empty promise, I guess, to begin with. So, so then or I'm maybe like, maybe they can't specifically talk about customers. So, truly, oh, so I, so I rephrase my question and I say, okay, um, new question. I want to create desktop as a service offering. Um, I, want to use, I want to use Windows 7 Enterprise desktops. I want to um, deliver the desktops to customers, but to customers who are not like to end user consumers. I want them to, to have a free desktop or a $10 a month desktop. I want to host it in my data center and deliver these to customers anywhere, anywhere in the you know, country. And I want them to be able to access it, and I don't want them to buy their own licenses. So how, how would I do that? And they were like, Brian – we cannot comment on customer what customers may or may not be doing. I said, no, 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 stop. This has nothing to do with on live. I want um, – forget on live. New topic, new thread. I want to do this. Please help me understand, Microsoft product people, how what I'm saying is possible to do. And I didn't hear back. So I emailed them a few days later. I'm like, "How? hello, can I hear an answer? And they're like, yeah, we're looking into this. We talked to our licensing people. Like, We'll get back to you. Fucking nothing from them. And so this is, there's been like three or four emails back and forth with them. And so really like they don't have an MSDN. They don't have, you know, this access like to the internal emails and all this kind of stuff. And now on top of all that, I finally asked them a question that you would think is a simple question and they can't even fucking tell me the answer. And so like, what the hell value does this program have? You know, like there's zero value in this program. Um, and then that just rekindles the old anger I have at Microsoft because, you know, I, 
I wrote an article like six months ago about how Microsoft is screwing the entire industry um, by purposefully making Windows 7 really hard to license. And I think, Gabe, in your OnLive article, someone um, wrote about this, like someone wrote about like this in the comment, right, where Microsoft is the ones that are holding back the desktop virtualization industry and desktops as a, as a service from happening um, mm -hmm. because, because they um, – the whole, I mean, the whole world, all these guys that are doing, like, and we talked to, like, you know, the, the desk tone and the two cloud people, and they're ready to go. The technology is ready to go for delivering desk, Windows desktops in the cloud, and Microsoft is just absolutely, like, purposefully making that difficult to do to, like, you know, support their shitty old-ass uh, freaking monopoly. So, like, the day that I stop using Microsoft products in general will be a very happy day for me, and I'm angry I still have to use Microsoft Office. I'm trying so hard to go 100% off of Microsoft, um, and I just fucking hate Microsoft. You can tweet me on that. Tweet quote me on that. I, I fucking hate Microsoft. That's bullshit. So I'm not going to MVP thing. Like, fuck them and their MVP. I'm actually going to take this trophy and, like, figure out, like, will it blend? So I don't know if I... I think this, uh, this proves that you are indeed app detective. <laughs> <laughs> no when i said i fucking hate microsoft i spelled that right um so um we'll we'll we'll, we'll film a different youtube video of me like destroying my trophy um and or like recycling it or whatever um i i if you're gonna do it i would mangle it and then put it back on the shelf <laughs> <laughs> oh that's amazing yeah i'm gonna get a mask and a sledgehammer um, put, a, put a jar of broken glass <laughs> on the shelf it's just such bullshit because like you know, and, and and what irks me the most about this whole thing is how, like, they always give this crap about how we love to listen to our customers. Um, and, you know, like, which is such – it's, like, so patronizing because – Every single MVP meeting I've been to for the past three or four years has been Microsoft desktop licensing, this VDI, VDA, VECD, SA, enterprise only, the, the rights. It's so messed up, so messed up, so messed up. And every single goddamn person Microsoft we talked to is like, I know, I know, I wish I could do something about it. But you know someone there in that back room can do something about it, but they're purposefully fucking their customers just so they can continue their monopoly to exist. And it's just such, such bullshit. And the thing is, like, obviously my whole my – whole, um, job is related to like the Microsoft Windows desktop delivery industry, and so I recognize that we as an industry have you know twenty years of Microsoft applications um, legacy you know in front of us that we have to figure out how to deliver so like i 'm not all about i mean but Microsoft are doing this to, to themselves like this is not like this is them specifically planning to screw customers just to protect their own, their own revenue um, and I guess that 's what monopolies do like Apple does the same thing. Um, and I guess I don't hate Apple for the same reason because they make cool products at least. Um, so maybe I'm being, um, like, uh, what's that called? Like, uh, when the pot calls the kettle black, <laughs> an asshole. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but so the, I, I, I don't know, but it's, it's just land like fuck that company. And so, um, I just, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of anything they're doing.